if you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman, spiritual business coach. And I am here as always with my best friend in Bouquete, Catherine Larange. And she is a spiritual business coach as well and a master mindset coach. And uh, we are talking today about stepping into the spotlight. And mm. this is such a big one for spiritual people. Oh my God. So, um, uh, the, the, the opposite of stepping into the spotlight is fear of being seen. Right. Mm. <laughs> and, mm. and there's so many ways in which that shows up. It shows up in past life issues. It shows up in early childhood trauma stuff. It shows up in uh, just, just a myriad of ways. And, you know, being able to address those issues is super important. If you want to be able to put yourself out in the world and allow your light to shine. So, mm. Do you want me to start or you want to start? Yeah, you go ahead. You're on, you're, you're like riffing with it. So I am, I'm on a roll. Yeah, okay. Are. Yeah, so you are. The, the thing I want to talk about the past life stuff, because that's the okay. thing that I see most often. And it relates to also owning your power mm. and your, your like badass spiritual power. Right. So there's a combination of those two things. And so, you know, issue one about the past life stuff is pretty much all of us were killed for our gifts in a past life at some point. Multiple and times, some of us. Yes. <laughs> in a myriad of ways. Yes. Oh my God. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, the, the, the being killed for your gifts in a past life thing is, is huge. It's huge for us. And so, you know, we're like, oh, I got killed for this last time. Do I really want to put it out there and be seen and, and maybe be a target for that again? And, you know, the, the short answer to that is you got to die somehow. Might as well die for a cause you believe in, right? Nobody gets out of this life alive. So there's your short answer. You just have to embrace it. It's, it's just that simple. But it is a huge issue for a lot of people. Um, and I, I feel like I told this story, but you know, stop me if I have, but did I tell the story about my, my, uh, my friend who was trying to hit publish on her website and just couldn't do it? Does that mm -hmm. sound familiar? No, no. Not. Okay. All right. So I'm going to tell this story then because it's a perfect example. So she came to me and she's like, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I need, and, and, you know, she hired me. She's like, I, I need you to help me. And I was like, okay, so let's take a look at this. And we sat down and what it came down to was a past life thing. She had actually been hung in a past life for her gifts and they did it very badly. And mm. she, so badly that she still had neck problems in this life. Mm. And so the, and so it wasn't a quick death is basically what it was, what I'm saying. And so what I did was I sat down and I did some visioning for her and I said, I cannot guarantee. I looked at all of the timelines, right? I looked at all the possibilities and I said, I cannot guarantee you will not be killed for your gifts in this life, but I can guarantee it will not be from hanging. Mm -hmm. And she went, oh, I said, yeah, if it happens, it'll be a gun. And she's like, oh, I could totally do that. And then she immediately hit publish. <laughs> right? She's like, as long as it's not hanging again, I could do it. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. That's right? interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, you know, it, it required somebody who could look at the timeline and be like, okay, there's no timeline in which you are hung for this. And she's like, okay, okay. then I can in do the this. Future. Yeah, in the future. Right? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And so it was, it uh, was, you know, sometimes it's just that simple. She had been mm -hmm. agonizing over this for months. I mean, she had yeah. the website up and it was ready to go. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was well yeah. written. And she's yeah. just like, I can't hit the button. <laughs> mm -hmm. And she just couldn't let herself do it. So that, that can be a huge issue for people. Mm -hmm. And then the other piece of that is the fear of your own gifts. Mm -hmm. And so oftentimes there's a fear of your own gifts. It's like, well, I can't be seen as an expert because then I might actually have to admit to myself that I'm powerful right? And if I have to admit to myself that I'm powerful, people have a lot of ugh 
associated with that. I mean, there's so much with that. There's responsibility issues. There's issues around not being willing to let yourself be powerful because you've got too much rage inside of you. And if you, you know, if you're somebody who blows up occasionally and does damage to the people around you, you will not give yourself more power because you're a good person and you don't want to lay waste to the world. Right. <laughs> it's like, cause I, yeah. I can't stop the anger. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's another reason yeah. why I see people limiting their power. I also see mm. guilt issues from earlier times. So sometimes when you uh, are growing up or if you're early in your process and you use your gifts to do damage by accident, by crossing the line that you didn't know was there and you hurt somebody, I have seen people do penance for that by limiting their gifts for decades. Okay. That's another thing that can, can stop people from stepping into it. So there's a lot, it's a complex thing, right? It is very complex and there are all sorts of, you know, you can be carrying past life stuff. You can be carrying uh, ancestral line stuff around, you know, you, you know, you have a family line issue where you can't be successful because you took that on from an ancestor, or you can't be seen because you took that on from an ancestor, or you have a, a cycle of, of success and failure and success and failure because you took it on from an ancestor, you know, there's, or, you know, you've got a, a, a sabotage pattern that causes that success and failure thing also will be another thing around that. And so that can cause you to be out and back, or if you burn yourself, out and then retreat and then burn yourself out and retreat. That's another pattern that will cause you to not be fully seen in the world because you keep back and forthing, right? So there's a lot of, of that kind of stuff that can show up. And there's so much that we, we can't possibly cover it on this call, but, but I just want you to be aware that these are patterns that you may see in yourself. And these are things that you would definitely want to get some help for because- sure. You know, these, these are complex issues that, you know, sometimes I've even seen curses coming down family lines. You know, I, I actually had a guy come to me who, who said his family had been cursed for generations and I looked and sure enough, they had been mm. and wrongly the, the shaman who had cursed them initially had been going insane and had been paranoid and had assumed something that did not actually happen and cursed them for it. So all sorts of weird shit, man. <laughs> okay. There's all kinds of stuff. And so this is why it's so important to, to, you know, have someone take a look at this for you. Right. And that's obviously something we can do, but you know, it, it, whether it's us or somebody else, take a look, right? There's also, you may have a sacred contract in place that is limiting. You may have, you know, I, it's, oh, so many things, right? Yeah. So many things. So yeah. if you're, if you're beating your head against the wall and you can't get yourself to do it, you know, that's the time to reach out and get a session. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, for sure. You know, and I, th I think too, wanting to be mindful of not making an agreement with what may have happened in like, you know, a past life or a curse or an ancestral line or any of that stuff. Because what, what I see happening is that people will, people, we step up to the edge of what we've known. Right. right. And anytime we cross that line, it's, it's, it's stepping out in a different way and it's going to bring up all of our internal structures that are just trying to keep us in what's comfortable for us. And so if we step up to that line and we're not taking the action, right? So it could be booking a speaking engagement. It could be publishing that website. It could be going on social media. It could be like, there's so many ways that we can be seen, right? It could be showing up more fully in your relationship. It could be asking for what you want. It could be even tapping into, to identifying that for yourself, like seeing yourself in a different way. Anytime we do that, it's going to bring up more often than not those feelings of you know, fear, hesitation, just because it's different than what we've done before. So, so we want to be mindful of not making an agreement with, oh, it must be this. So I can't do anything until I get that fixed. Right. right. Cause that's right. another way that we're, we're keeping ourselves from being seen. So saying like, oh, I'm, you know, maybe I have like a, a, a curse or I have you know, a past life or I have this. And so you find yourself going to like all these different people to try to figure it out. And what that's doing is it's keeping you in the pattern of not actually taking the action. 
Does that make sense? Yeah. So let me, let me just clarify that because it sounds like we said two different things, but we didn't. Okay. So I just want to clarify that. So, so yes, all of the things that I said could possibly be true. Right. And there's a limit to how much of that stuff you go looking for before Mm -hmm. you have to just realize that you're in resistance. There's an avoidance resistance in place there saying, Mm -hmm. oh, well, if I keep looking for the problem, then I don't have to actually do anything. Right. And so that's what Catherine was just saying is that, that you, you know, it's all well and fine to go looking for that stuff. And sometimes that stuff is important, is important and relevant. And so, you know, it's important to, to look because sometimes that stuff is there. Right. But Mm -hmm. don't get down the rabbit hole. Don't go looking so hard and so long that you do nothing. Was there anything else you wanted to add to this concept? Mm -hmm. Oh, childhood trauma stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Because this is another reason why you might be avoiding being seen is is because you were in an unsafe environment as a child or in an adult relationship where that was true. And mm-hmm. being invisible was the safest way to not get attacked. Yeah. And so in that scenario, you know, being able to stay, stay safe, you know, when you come out of one of those environments where you're not safe on a regular basis, then this mm-hmm. is a, this can be a very real concern. And it can be a thing where you're like, uh, I don't know if I can be seen. I don't know if I can. I don't know if I can. Right. Oh, and so yeah. all of that. Right. Yeah. And so that's another issue that has to be addressed, but that has to, that involves unwinding the trauma. Right. So you have yeah. to, to yeah. deal with all of that too. That's, that's some shadow work and things like that. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, um, and also like in a family of origin, that might've been your identity, right. It was the right. quiet. One. So maybe you were like the quiet one and that was your kind of position in the whole family system. Or you were the scapegoat and you're afraid to be yeah. the scapegoat in your life, right? Yeah. So yeah. there's yeah. either side of the co- of the coin there, right? Yeah. So yeah. yeah, all of these things play into the fear of being seen. And so you guys, this is, this is something, it, it is a complex issue. And, you know, I just want, we're, this episode is about presencing you to it, not about solving yeah. it because it is not a quick solve yeah. solution, right? Yeah. So, so you know, I gave, yeah. yeah, I gave you the one. The one of, you know, you got to die somehow. That's the one that's a quick solve. Everything else requires some effort and some working on it. So, you know, if you have this particular issue, that's when you want to reach out and get some help. Okay. Yeah. 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 And I think that's it for this week. We are, don't forget to like, subscribe and share. We are so happy to have you here. And uh, if you have any questions, please, please send them in. You can actually either email them to kelly at kellysparta.com or you can go to spiritguidespodcast.com and there's actually an ask a question button and you can ask a question that it gives you 90 seconds to talk and you could just ask it verbally and then you don't have to type anything. So, and that gets delivered direct to my email box and we're happy to set you up with a, with, with an episode for that because we're always looking for topics. So, and that's it for this week. Don't forget that what you focus on expands and what you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. Have a great one. We'll see you next time. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh, 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 oh